the, the root word for the word offense or stumbling block that tells us Peter was a trigger or a, a movable stick in a trap. The root word is, means to bow or to kneel. Now, this isn't talking about worshiping. It's talking about what happens, what, what movement takes place when you bow or kneel. You fall, you collapse, just like the trap collapses over the, the game that's intended to be hunted. Peter, get behind me. I'm taking the lead. You're a trigger. You're a movable stick. You're an impediment that causes the trap to collapse upon somebody. Wow. <laughs> Not only did Jesus tell him this, he, he gave him a double whammy. He gave him a double punch. He said, not only are you a stumbling block and a fence, a trigger, a stick that makes the trap collapse on somebody, but you don't savor the things of God. In other words, you don't have the mind of God in what you're saying. Now, he just, several verses earlier, identified Christ as the Messiah. He was just on a spiritual mountaintop. And now suddenly, he's at the very lowest point that he could ever be rebuked by the Savior himself. You don't have in mind the things of God. That's what the word savor means. Or in the New International Version, it just comes right out and says, you don't have the mind of God here. You're not in the same mind. You don't have the understanding. You don't have the wisdom of God. You're not seeking what God wants. You're not striving for what God wants. You're not seeking the interest of God. Wow. What's he talking about? He's talking about anyone or anything or any ideology or any philosophy that opposes the true gospel that says Jesus didn't die, didn't rise from the dead. Any, any flawed process that is opposed to the gospel, which is the power of God and the salvation, is a stumbling block. It is a cage ready to collapse on somebody to take them to their doom. Anyone... And Paul said this, he said, the preaching of the cross is foolishness to those who don't believe. <laughs> Paul said, if anybody preaches another gospel, let him be anathema, let him be cursed. Because somebody who preaches anything other than salvation by grace through faith and the finished substitutionary death of Jesus Christ for you and for me is like that trigger of a trap ready to, to pull you in so the trap will collapse down upon you. Wow. <laughs> now, at this point, Peter's jaw is probably right down there on the ground. I mean, he's probably with his tail between his legs and his ears down, you know, wanting to crawl into a corner. The other disciples are probably looking at Peter and listening to what Jesus is saying, and, and they're just eyes up like this wide because they're, they're understanding what Jesus is saying here. Have you ever been like that? <laughs> I mean, you, you're at a point in your life you've had great spiritual victory. Every day last week you were in the Word, and you were praying, and you were seeking God's best and in, best and interest in your life. And you're on a spiritual high, and then last night you happen to be channel surfing on TV, and, and, and you were caught in the trap. <laughs> and you fell face down. I mean, I don't know what it was. I don't know, I don't know what goes on in your life. You ever been up here spiritually, and the next moment you're down here? You ever been up here spiritually, and, and you start reading God's Word, and you find out, whoa, quit hitting me around with that two-by-four, Lord. Now I feel down here. I've been there. That's, that's, I'm there a lot, actually. Jesus says, you are a stumbling block, and you do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. And as, as we go to the Lord's Supper this morning, I want us to think about that first time when the gospel was exposed to our eyes. And we saw it. And we saw our need. And my question, first of all, is did you receive, did you really take and put your arms around Christ physically with energy and intensity because you saw you needed it? You had something to say. I want that. That's what it means to be a, to be a Christian. Be a born again believer in Christ. 
if you have done that, then are you caught in a place in your life where you don't have the mind of God about something? You don't have His interest. You're not really seeking Him. And you become a stumbling block to yourself. And as we go to the Lord's Supper, we remember the Gospel. And we think about it. Christ and all that He did on the cross for us, all that He endured, and how He, how He suffered. You know that word "suffering" in Greek is an interesting word. It literally means a sensible experience. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. He suffered many sensible experiences at the hands of the of the Roman guards and at the hands of of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes in the temple. When they slapped him around and beat him, he suffered many sensible experiences. And he did that for us. And as we think about that this morning, I hope that you have seized Christ and committed yourself as a follower of him with a lot of physicality in your life. And then I hope that if you see yourself like Peter, he believed in Christ. He was committed to him. But he slipped and he fell and Christ confronted him right away. As we go to the Lord's Supper, I want us to take just a moment of quietness right now. And, and I want us to thank God for what Jesus Christ did for us. Thank Him for the Gospel. And then I want you to examine your lives. And Lord, if, if, if there's any sin, if there's anything in your life that you're, that you're caught up into, and that cage has come down upon you and you can't get out. Confess and forsake it. As you think in mind of what Christ did for you and for me on the cross. Let's just take a few moments right now. Joanne, I'm going to ask you to come up with the organ. But you don't need to play yet. And let's just have some evaluation and some time of thanks and praise. In our hearts. <laughs> 